This video is brought to you by Squarespace. From websites and online stores to marketing tools and analytics, Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence and run your business. So the amount of questions I get on pretty much all of my videos regarding wallpapers and you know which ones are my favorites and where I get my wallpapers from and which wallpaper is used here and which wallpaper is used there and so on, it's actually very significant and I actually get it. It can be a never ending process to try and find the perfect wallpaper for your phone. So here's the plan for today's video. We're going to unpack all things related to wallpapers, breaking it into three different sections. Section one, what I look for and what I try and avoid when searching for a wallpaper. Section two, where I most often find the wallpapers that I use. And finally for section three, what are my current favorite wallpapers? What are the backdrops that I find myself using most at the moment? Sound like a plan? Good. Okay, so to start things off, in terms of what I actually look for in a wallpaper, obviously it does really depend on what I'm trying to achieve with the overall setup, but generally speaking, I'm looking for a few key things. Firstly, it needs to be clean enough so that I can put things on top of the wallpaper, whether that be application icons or widgets, they need to actually be visible and comfortably so. And this means that the wallpaper can't be too cluttered. So whilst images like this may look nice, I'm certainly not gonna be using them as a wallpaper. Secondly, whilst black and white setups can be very visually appealing and they certainly have their place, for the most part, I am looking for small splashes of color in my wallpapers. It doesn't have to, and in fact, it shouldn't be a lot of color. Often just one or two colors will do the trick perfectly, but I certainly am looking for some color for sure. And then finally, I often find myself getting into a little bit of a wallpaper rut when I limit myself to just photo-based wallpapers and for some reason don't consider abstract or pattern-based wallpapers when in actual fact they might actually serve my wallpaper needs far better than a photo-based wallpaper would. And the reverse is true as well. If you're someone who feels like you have to have an abstract or pattern-based wallpaper, then it's definitely worthwhile branching out and considering a photo-based wall instead and you never know, you might just find your favorite wallpaper to date. Okay, so let's now talk about where I find most of my wallpapers. I've got a few key wallpaper applications that I tend to find myself going back to over and over again, but it's worthwhile mentioning that a lot of these wallpaper apps are actually what we dub Unsplash clients. And if you're not familiar with what that means, well, it actually refers to the fact that they mostly get their wallpapers from the website unsplash.com. If you haven't heard of Unsplash before, then all I can say is that it is an amazing website full of 100% completely free, even for commercial use photographs, a lot of which will make for phenomenal wallpapers, not just for your mobile devices, but for pretty much any device as well. So if you see a wallpaper in a video that you like the look of, then it's always worth checking unsplash.com because you never know, you might find exactly what you're looking for. All right, now in terms of wallpaper applications, at the moment, I tend to find myself going back to three main options. The first and probably my favorite is called Wallpy. It's been installed the longest of the bunch on my phone, and it's always been my first go-to spot for finding photography-based backdrops. It is an Unsplash client, but I've got heaps and heaps of wallpapers favorited within the app that I keep flicking between. And I feel like every time I open the app, I'm adding more and more to that favorite section as well. And as I said, it is probably my most trusted wallpaper app of the lot. A similar application, but also a go-to for finding photo-based wallpapers for me is called Wardrobe. It's also an Unsplash client, but I feel like I never see any overlap between the two applications. And I've also got lots of favorites that I've come across using this app as well. And finally, at the moment, I've been finding myself coming back to a lot of the wallpapers that are found within the wallpaper application called Abstract. I actually featured this in a recent episode of Top Android Apps, but in short, it essentially features a collection of wallpapers designed by the OnePlus wallpaper designer himself. So they're all that way inspired and I actually use one of the wallpapers found within this app as my current backdrop. Okay, so before we press on with the rest of the video, I just wanna thank today's video sponsor, Squarespace. So for those who don't already know, I actually already have a website that I set up using Squarespace a while ago. And so when they recently reached out to sponsor the channel, it was an absolute no brainer. For me, choosing Squarespace to design and host my site was a super easy decision. They have by far the best looking templates, which are also really easy to customize and make your own as well. And you can even install multiple templates across your site and switch between them really quickly to make sure you've got a design that you're really happy with. 
What's great is that each template also automatically includes a built-in mobile version as well, which is super important given how many people browse the web on their mobile devices these days. They also have an inbuilt online store and e-commerce service, which I'm definitely interested in setting up and using in the future myself. And they also made it ridiculously easy for me to set up my own domain, samuelbeckman.com. I personally found the website setup process really easy, so I reckon you will as well. But if you need even more help, then you also have access to their award-winning 24-7 customer service. If you're looking to make your own website, then definitely head to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch that website, visit squarespace.com slash Sam Beckman to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Okay, so on to section number three, my current favorite wallpapers. And this is so hard to nail down into just one video because I know me, my favorite wallpapers will change, no doubt within the next month or so. But I figured, what the heck, let's just bite the bullet and do it. And so here is a snapshot in time of my current favorite wallpapers. We'll start with the one that I'm currently using as my backdrop. And as I mentioned earlier, this is taken from the abstract wallpaper application. And it's actually found under the official OnePlus wallpapers category, and it's called OP6-5, which means I believe it's actually one of the stock wallpapers found on the OnePlus 6. I just really love the abstract design of this one as well as the colors. It's got this vibrant feel to it without being overly in your face. And it just works so well with the setup that's happening on top of it at the moment. Another wallpaper that I've been using a lot lately is this super minimal sunset and blue sky backdrop that I found using Wallpy. And of course this and everything else mentioned throughout the video will be linked down in the notes below. But this is the sort of backdrop that will support just about any setup you put on top of it beautifully, primarily because there's not a lot going on. We've got these complementary colors on show, a little bit of detail down the bottom there. But aside from that, that's it. Now, rather than talking you through every other wallpaper I've enjoyed using in the past, I'm actually just gonna show you a quick montage on screen right now, as well as the application where each wallpaper was located from. And again, these are wallpapers that I have found to work really well within a range of different setups that I have used them in. They're all linked down below. So if you wanna try any of them out in your own home screen setups, then make sure to do so. And if you wanna send any setups you use them in my way, then feel free to do so over on Twitter. But that's it for this video. Hopefully you found it helpful. And if you did, then a thumbs up would be very much appreciated. But aside from that, thank you all very much for watching and I'll catch you later.